Good evening and welcome to Views with Joyce Waddell. I want to thank you for joining us this evening. We have as our guest a very talented young man. And rhythm and dance is our topic for tonight. Because he sings, he dances, he rock, raps, and he does it all. And we are very happy to have him to share his talent and how he can do so many things, just one person, and be successful at all of it. Often we see someone that can sing and they're really good at that. Someone who's very good at rapping, they're very good at that. And someone who can dance, very good at that. But to be good at singing, dancing, rapping, he does it all. And so we are happy to have him to share his talents, share his experiences, so that someone may benefit by the experiences and the things that he shared and the success that he has encountered at such a very young age. So welcome, Barry. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Now, you, you have a stage name, don't you? Yes, ma'am. I go by the name Carlos Dwayne. That's oh. my stage name uh, when it comes to my singing and my dance company. So. Now, you started a dance company on your own? I did. I started a dance company here in Charlotte called Rhythmically Inclined Dance Company. Um, we have classes every Thursday. That's where we have our classes. It's adult classes, so um, we teach adults different um, dance combos and different things like that throughout, throughout the week. Um, I do some private sessions as well, so um, whenever people are looking for choreographers or they're just looking for someone to um, help them dance or get back into the swing of things when it comes to dance, they'll contact me. Then I'll have a little private session with them for about an hour and we'll get things rolling that way. Well, how difficult it is it to teach adults to learn how to dance? I know some people want to learn shag and they do that, but usually if they're an adult and they want to learn, something, something seems to be amiss, something that they missed some steps along the way and did not learn and is it difficult? It is a little more difficult, I would say, teaching adults than children and I, and I think it's because children they're kind of like a blank slate, so they have a clean mind, so you can, you can teach them, but adults, when they have already a way of doing things, it can be a little more challenging, but it's really fun, it's really rewarding. Um, they come in, the, the people who come into the classes, they are very open to learn different things. Um, I challenge them, so I make sure that everything that I'm doing is a challenge. I'm making sure that I'm pushing them, because a lot of those people want to go and be dancers in the industry. So my job is to train them and get them ready for the industry dance through a whole bunch of different um, techniques and classes and things that I offer at Rhythm and Clean Dance. You mean uh, an adult want to go in and be a dancer? Mm, yes, ma'am. So it's some, sometimes it's like teenagers. I will, I normally take between like 17 and up um, as far as people that come to my class. Um, so it's a lot of those people that are trying to get into the industry and, you know, break through now. I have some people who went to audition for Janet Jackson, you know, who've been to my class and things like that. So. So you, so you have some success stories if you have people who've gone and auditioned to be on stage with Janet Jackson and some of the other fam famous singers because they do have backup dancers that right. dance with them. And what about America Has Talent, some of these other shows? Have you had people go audition for those? I haven't had any um, people audition for those yet. Um, I'm still trying to build. We're still in the building stages of the company. Um, I've had some people who I've um, sent out to music videos. They've been in music videos for different artists. I'm a local artist here in Charlotte, um, as well as some different artists who have reached out to me to try to get those people in them. So I make sure that I'm pushing these people out to work. You know, they want to be dancers in the industry or you, they want to be dancers in different areas. You know, I make sure I train them and get them out there work. I hear some people say they have two left feet and that they cannot dance. They just do not have the rhythm and they can't get their bodies to do what it needs to do. Have you ever seen anybody like that? Yes, I have, actually. Um, and those people, it just takes a little more patience to get them. I think we all have that rhythm inside of us. That's why I did uh, choose to name the dance company Rhythmically Inclined Dance, because I feel like we all have that rhythm inside of us. Sometimes it just takes somebody to push us to find it. You know what I'm saying? So those people with the two left feet, it's not that they can't dance. They just need somebody to help them find their groove. Oh, okay, interesting. Now, in addition to your dance company, you have another business uh, that you branched off to that you're doing so well with, and that has really 
caught the eye of a lot of people who want to help promote it. They want to be a part of it. Yes, ma'am. I, um, I'm also an artist. I'm an R&B artist. Um, so R&B and soul is my music. Um, I just released on June, on May the 31st, I just released um, my first EP, Sincerely Carlos Dwayne. And the love has been overwhelming and the positive feedback and the things that I've been receiving about it um, has been amazing. So that is something that has become very successful for me. Um, I'm still working to get to the point of success that I want to be at, but it's just, I see it, it's, I see it climbing already at the point where it is now. So it's, it's amazing. Well, Carlos, as you think about the R&B artists and, and as you think about that group of people that you work with and the people that you're competing with, mm -hmm. it's very different now from how Motown was right, with Barry right, right. Gardy <laughs> in Detroit when he, when he started off and very different from a lot of the other labels because the competition is, is there and well. you can do it in so many different ways. So what are some of the things that you have experienced that caused you to be successful when many others have not? Well, I stick to my own lane. Um, I try to stay as authentic and as genuine to my music as I can. I write my own music. Um, I have a great producer who helps um, to make the music come into fruition. And I just really work hard to stay authentic when it comes to my music. A lot of people, I feel like they go wrong because they try to conform to what is on the radio now, or they try to conform to be uh, what is popular or what is popping at the time. But if you stay authentic and genuine to yourself and your music, people appreciate that. And that's what I feel like people appreciate about my music and my EP that just came out is that it's authentic and it gives those positive vibes and those positive feet, that positive um, energy that people are looking for in the music now. Because now, you know, people just put anything over a beat. <laughs> you know, they just put anything over a beat and it's something to dance to, but it's not really talking about anything. So I try to stay true to the message in the music. I, I, I understand that when you say it's not talking about anything. Right. <laughs> just, just, a, just about a lot of noise and about just anything that comes to their mind right. and it has no substance right not only does it not have substance it so, oftentimes it has a lot of vulgarity and curse right. words and just recently somebody was at a, a service station and they turned on the radio and had all these curse words in it and got in a big argument did you hear about that i didn't hear about that yes and they got in a big argument because the other persons didn't want to hear it right so um I, i've seen and heard a lot of that now you're going to share with us that music that you're talking about that's so authentic and, and that's so great and wonderful that everybody want to be a part of, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. I do have some, um, some music videos that I've been working on that I would love to share with you all today. My thoughts are currently loading. I'm apparently exploding. No air, I'm choking. Cause I found my air. My head is just out there floating. And I just can't seem to focus. I'm sure you notice. Cause I'm feeling that you might just be floating. At too. times when I try to hold you, feel you on my skin. It feels so cold like you're afraid to let me in. Then you kiss my lips and make me feel so good again. I wanna know, are you down? Sink or swim? Go I know I can be a mess, sometimes it's more than less When I'm stressed, I tend to shut you out, but I'm doing my best Yeah, I'm hella needy, I'm worth it, baby, believe me Just see me, don't leave me, promise me that you, you won't just run out like the rest Amazing how you make me feel, my world is gonna stop One touch from you just makes me feel like I'm a pop Then you walk away and my heart it begins to drop Just hold on to me and we'll flow we'll to the top Go of the down with me Like 
like Priscilla in the floor You give me feelings galore Like a bongo in the Congo My rhythms will pour Into your soul, leaving you whole But still want for more I see you scared, why fear? If you there and I'm here Sink into me like energy They just see waves from the pit If you able and I'm willing Can you take what I'm giving? It's a gift, our hearts tied It's a ribbon in the sky now Put your pride aside, we going deep If you down the ride, we going deep Baby, let's get how we going deep. So deep You blow my mind When we go Artists, we'll continue to talk with Carlos as we talk about rhythm and dance and how it's making a difference in the lives of many people and how he's been very successful in all of it. We just saw the video that he produced and he's really doing great things throughout this community and making appearances large and small throughout the United States. So what's the largest audience you you perform under? Um, I've done a few. <laughs> I am just starting to, as far as my own music, getting back into performing it with that. So I've done a festival in Atlanta. I've done a festival in Atlanta um, recently in May. Um, that was a pretty nice sized crowd. Um, as far as dancing, I just danced to back up for somebody um, who was opening for R. Kelly in the concert in Greensboro. Um, so that was a huge crowd. So I've been, you know, trying to... R. Kelly was supposed to come someplace else, wasn't he, uh, after he left Greensboro? He was, was supposed to go to Chicago before Greensboro. Did he then, come to Charlotte, too? Mm, I saw some signs on the highway saying that he was coming to Charlotte. No, did he, you, he did was, you see that? I didn't see it, but no, he, he, he was to Greensboro. I don't know if he was supposed to come to Charlotte. He, but he, he didn't go anyplace else other than Greensboro? No. On this southern tour, none right. of these other cities around. Mm -mm, it was just Greensboro. I did. I, I saw a sign. Of, um, to Charlotte. Yeah, that oh, he was supposed to been coming to a private club in Charlotte. Oh yeah, yeah, he did do that. He did do that. But it was just an after party for the concert. But it was R. Kelly coming to Charlotte. It was R. Kelly coming to Charlotte, though. So yeah, you're he came right. To, yeah, he came to an after party in Charlotte. Yes, ma'am. And, and nobody couldn't come. Only, uh, only people who were invited could come. Oh, I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything. But you know, okay. I just danced and I did my part. Did you dance in Charlotte when he came to the after party? No. Mm, just okay. uh, at the concert. I would love to have gone to the after party, but they, I, <laughs> I didn't, no, I didn't see how how you could get tickets or anything. I just kept, kept seeing, evidently it was open because they kept seeing signs on the highway and right. on the posters yeah, saying he was coming. So when he left Greensboro, he just came for short. Not a concert, right, right. Just a, an appearance, right. But it was a great experience um, dancing. Um, I worked with a great artist, um, and so it allowed me to um, have that platform to actually go out there and show that dance side. And like I said, even with me pushing my other people in my classes to work with different artists, for them to see me working with different artists and you know dancing and doing that backup thing, it was inspiring for them because they like they feel like you know if my the person who's teaching me can go out there and do it, I know that I can do it as well. So. Now, did you did you take that so that you would have that in a part of your platform, a part of what you, your portfolio? My portfolio, where well, the artist the artist actually recorded, his manager did. 
they well they recorded it because I was on the stage, so they recorded it and um, they have copies of it and everything like that, so that we can actually see it and have it for our portfolio and things like that. So yeah, they they have some good videos. They had about two cameras there rolling. So as you continue to work with uh, rhythm and dance, where do you see your career taking off and going? next as you move to the next level would it be that you're going to open additional studios you know like fred astaire he had several studios didn't he mm -hmm. and he had he was a dancer and that name just kept going on and on throughout the united states like a chain do you right. ever see anything going on yes I, I plan to take rhythmically inclined dance to a bunch of different states i want to um open up a whole bunch of different things and make it a franchise, make it, make sure that we have Rhythm Green Client Dance Studios in Atlanta, Rhythm Green Client Dance Studios in Florida, Texas, California, so a whole bunch of different places, but I want Charlotte to be like that home, that home studio so that everybody knows that this is where it originated at and this is where, if you want to get the full, full, full experience, you know what I'm saying, you have to come to Charlotte to get that experience. So I definitely want to push it out there and in the future, it will be. Now, as you begin, continue to work with dance and continue to work with your dance studios, this is very time consuming. It's like a 24 seven, isn't it? Because when you're not working with students in your studio, you're also planning and looking for uh, the next venture or either looking for the next place that you're going to go to perform. Right, it is, it is very time consuming. Um, right now, actually though, um, I have two other teachers who I'm training um, to also teach the classes as well because I've gotten so um, engulfed in the music, um, my own music, and the performances that I've been having, um, being in the studio and recording and promoting and doing the music, it's kind of pulled me a little bit away from being able to teach the classes as much. So I'm training two other choreographers under me to start teaching and getting comfortable with teaching the classes so that I don't have to teach as much because it is very time consuming having to choreograph every single week something different. Um, then like I said, I choreograph different things for people individually, so having to do that and then still do my own music. So it can be very time consuming, but I'm making sure that, because my goal is to be an artist as far as my music, that's what I really want to do while having Rhythmically Inclined Dance Studio building while I'm working. So I'm working here and making sure that this is working here. So it's just a whole bunch of different avenues I'm going down, so. And so as, as you look, artists, we'll continue to talk with Carlos as we talk about rhythm and as we talk about dance because he's combined them both and he's very successful at what he's doing. And not only that, he's providing opportunities for others to learn what he's doing so that they can be successful as well. He's expanding what he's doing throughout the United States on the stage, television, and in public appearances. So we're going to be hearing a lot from Carlos in the very near future. Yes, ma'am. Carlos, now you chose Carlos um, Dwayne. Dwayne as your stage name. Yes, ma'am. Any reason why you ch chose that name, and does someone else have it? Did you patent it? Well, so Carlos Dwayne is Carlos is my first name, and Dwayne is my middle name. Um, I'm a junior, so it's Carlos Dwayne Barrett Jr. That's my full name. Um, but I wanted to kind of just use that uh, first and middle name because I felt. It really was more of, you know, who I am. And my dad, you know, I got my name from my dad. He was an artist as well, but he was a gospel artist. And he was a pastor as well. So he made a big impact in gospel. And I, and I kind of felt like, you know, my dad already made a name with Carlos Barrett. So how can I still keep my name but be a little different? So I just chose to go with the first and middle name. So Carlos Duane, that's where it comes from. And... So you already had a background. You had already seen this happen with your father. Yes, ma'am. So you had someone, um, you, had, you had a role model already that helped you to move kind of smoothly into the industry, kind of smoothly into what you're doing. Um, as you look at the rhythm, as you look at recording, as you look at public appearances. Well, so my dad actually, um, he passed on last June. And so I didn't start it actually motivated me to get into my music even more because I, I've been singing since I was younger. I've been singing with my dad, I've been singing behind him, I've been singing in a whole bunch of different um, school plays and talent shows and things like that, but I kind of got away from music um, 
because I started getting into other things in college. And so when my dad passed, it really was a motivation to jump back into music because I know that that was something that he was very passionate about. And it was something that I was very passionate about as well. And so it really pushed me to get back into writing music, get back into singing, and really focus on following my dreams and goals because it really was like a wake up call that life is so short. And I, and I know there was a lot of things that my dad did while he was alive. I know there was a lot of things that he still probably wanted to do um, as far as his music and things like that go. And so every day when I'm doing my music and I'm doing those things, I think about my father and how, you know, when it comes to the music, I know he would want me to push myself and use my gifts and my talents. And so when it comes to music, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I wish he was here to actually see me doing that stuff, but I know he's here in spirit and he's still pushing me in ways that even though he's not physically here, he's still motivating me. So, you know, he did with the recording and things like that. Now your father sang with a group as well, didn't he? Didn't he have a group that he sang with and he traveled with, with a spiritual group and um, throughout uh, North Carolina and throughout the United States? And that's how you got your enthusiasm. That's where you got your push and your drive. Well, he um, actually started in the group when he was younger. But then as he got older, he started getting into ministry as far as being a pastor. That's when he started going into, um, you know, doing his solo projects. And he have us singing like background and things like that. But it really was just him as a solo artist. But he's worked with so many different um, gospel artists who are in the industry now. So yeah, he, he just was focused on being a pastor, but being that singer on the side, so. Well, often, you see that a lot of times. Yes. A pastor who can sing, a pastor who can play the piano, a pastor who's doing, you know, other things other than just, you know, preaching and ministering right. from the pulpit. So, um, you grew up with this, and so you saw how it worked. Yes. And so, you have a manager, but you you um, could be a manager yourself. Right. Because and you know the ins and outs of the industry. You know about the recordings. You and you know what it takes, and you know that it takes money, finances to move it forward, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am, and I'm still learning. It's so much that I'm still learning, and I'm very grateful for my manager. Um, my manager, Jerry Washington, he is very organized and keeping everything on task, making sure that I'm, he's pushing me and promoting me and, put, and putting me out to the platforms that I need to be at. And even though I could you know, do it by myself, it's much easier when you have a manager, somebody who's backing you in, in your corner, and especially with me doing that and my dance company, I need that to kind of keep me uh, focused in that area as far as things go. So it's definitely good to have a manager. I'm still learning. I'm very new when it comes to music still, even after singing for so long and being around music so long, being an independent artist, I'm still very new to this. So I'm still learning everything, every step of the way and absorbing all of this knowledge that I'm getting from artists around me, so. But you have a lot of brand new uh, labels now uh, before it was about five of them, mm -hmm. say in the 70s, and you you belong maybe these five RCA and um, um, whatever the names are, and now you have like hundreds. Mm -hmm. So how do you choose which one that you're going to be with? Well, I'm independent right now. I mean, and I'm not with the label. Everything I do, I do on my own. So. Well, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Okay, and hope that you'll come again. And thank audience, you. I want to thank you too for being with us on Views with Joyce Waddell. Tune in again next week for another interesting program.
They must be shook, be shook. This one look is all it took. And nobody can ever say we are. We are meant to be. Cause I've got you when you do that. They see, baby, you. You're the night to my moonlight, baby. Hold me tight when I go crazy. Then when I fight for a baby, just don't change and I'll be saying my voice when I can't speak. My strength when I get weak. These niggas can't make me tell it. I feel it. That's why. Sometimes, asking myself for me being so possessive will make you stay. At times, I feel you floating away like paper hearts in a river, and I ask myself, Are you truly down the ride like I am for you?